if you're anything like me, you'll have had some questions over the past couple of weeks. And one of the big questions you may be asking yourself is, why toilet paper? I mean, I can understand people panic buying flour or rice or pasta or things like that. But Lou Roll, not so sure about that. But if you've been watching the news over the past few weeks, people have been offering suggestions as to why this is. Experts have been saying why we've been panic buying toilet roll and, and things like that. And the experts seem to think it's about control. It's about being able to take control over some aspect of what's going on, because this is a big thing. The coronavirus is, is a big issue and it's bigger than you, it's bigger than me and, and we feel like we can't control so much and it's almost as if we're saying well I can't control whether or not I get the virus, I can't control what's going to happen to my, my job or to the economy of the country but I can make sure I don't run out of toilet paper. Well I'm going to read some verses from Isaiah chapter 50 verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. One of the books in the Old Testament that sort of addresses this issue of, of what we do when things go wrong and, and how we handle suffering is the book of Job. Now, some people may look at that and think that the point of that book is to explain why bad things are happening or, or to give us a theology of suffering. But I don't think that's what the book is trying to tell us. All through the book, Job has these things happen to him and he never knows why they're happening. He never really knows what's going on. I think the whole point of the book of Job is to tell us that we don't have control when things go wrong, that we don't know the reasons for a lot of the bad things that happen to us or in the world. And there's something in us that isn't satisfied with that, that wants to get control. Sometimes, as followers of Jesus, we use our faith as a way of actually trying to get control. It may sound like those words in Isaiah, we're trusting in the Lord, we're relying on God, but really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get control back. We say to God, well if I do certain things or if I pray a certain way or pray certain prayers, then God sort of owes me. I will have some sort of control. I, I won't get sick or I'll be protected in some way or I can exercise some form of control over what's going on. The writer of Isaiah says, no, the only thing we can do in moments like this is rely on God, trust in the Lord. And that doesn't mean using our faith to try and manipulate God or as a form of actually just trying to make ourselves feel better because we, we feel like we're getting some control back. You know, and our faith becomes it's not in God, it's in our prayers or it's in the formula we followed or, or something like that. The prophet in Isaiah actually contrasts a view, uh, a, a view of, uh, of dealing with uncertainty other than relying in, on God, trusting in the Lord, he puts forward another thing that we might choose to do. So I'm going to read again Isaiah 50. I'm going to read verse 10, but I'm also going to read the next verse, verse 11. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Now next verse, verse 11. But now all you who light fires and provide yourselves with flaming torches, go, walk in the light of your fires and of the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. 
So Isaiah is contrasting two views there, those who trust in God, those who rely on the Lord and those who, when they're faced with darkness, light fires and walk in the light of their own fire. And Isaiah says the only thing that leads to is lying down in torment because it doesn't work. We cannot have enough control over a big event like this otherwise we will end up lying down in torment we'll literally be lying on our beds awake saying what about this or what can I do about that or what if if this happens we aren't able to guarantee or control anything we can take steps in fact the government suggested uh, the self-isolation social distancing closing Uh, everything down except for key workers and essential journeys and things like that and those are good things because those are acts of love by that we are trying to protect the vulnerable in our society we're trying to prevent the the NHS from being overloaded those are good steps we can take but there's all these other things we do like panic buying or or trying to make deals with God manipulating God they're really about us trying to take control of a situation that is bigger than us and Isaiah says what you're doing there is instead of trusting God in the darkness you're lighting your own fires and walking by the light of your own fires. Larry Crabb in his book Connecting talks about certain sort of attitudes in us that work against what God is trying to do and he uses those two verses in Isaiah to talk about an idea he calls firelighting this whole idea of when we face uncertainty having confidence and trust not in God but in our plans but in 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 what we are doing rather than in who God is and it's uh, interesting because I recognize that in myself that that des- that desire to to get confidence and comfort from the steps i am taking rather than in trusting in god and he has some interesting things to say about firelighters i'm going to read what he says see if you you recognize yourself in this the way that i do this is what larry crab writes he says firelighters hate uncertainty They are terrified of confusion. Their nagging question is always, am I right? Am I doing this properly? Am I making big mistakes? Is there a better way of handling this situation? Who would know that might tell me? Firelighters demand clear answers, practical instructions and doable solutions. Life is livable if they can feel confident in their plans. So they insist on good plans and often find them in the Bible. Not always because the plans are there, but because they want them to be there. Do you recognise yourself in that? Does that ring true? At this time, where is your trust? What are you relying on? It reminds me of the words of Jesus in Luke 12, where he says, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his or her life? If then you can't do this very little thing, then why worry about the rest? This is a a big situation we face, an unknown darkness, if you like. And in these moments, we have two choices of what we can do. We can light our own torches. We can try and find a way through our own cleverness, through our own plans. We can try and solve all these problems ourselves, even though we're guaranteed to miss some or get the wrong answers or never be ahead enough to to be fully at peace and fully in control. We can walk by the fire of our own torches or we can reach out a hand And take the hand that waits for us in the darkness, the hand of the God who is bigger than the darkness. And we can say, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where this is all going to go. I don't know what's at the other end of this darkness. But I'm going to trust you. I'm going to rely on you.